Yo, I'm Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at how to use an on premises data gateway with your Power BI data flows, whether or not you are an admin of the gateway. Let's do this. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, Power BI data flows. If we wanna to connect to data that's on premises, we have to use the on premises data gateway. When Power BI data flows first came out, you were restricted to having to be the admin of the gateway. That has since changed. And so what I wanna do is walk through what that experience looks like and what it looks like for both an admin of the gateway and for someone that's not an admin of the gateway. And I think that there's one specific step that most people may trip up on. So. Enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and see how this works. All right, I'm gonna look at this from the perspective of two different users. The first user is going to be my account, so A. Saxon at Guy in a Cube, and the other user is going to be John Doe at Guy in a Cube. My A. Saxon account is an admin for everything. John Doe, within this given workspace, take a look at the access, and John Doe is just a member of this workspace. And if we go and look at our on-premises data gateway, we'll go to manage gateways, we'll look at administrators, and John Doe is not an administrator of the gateway. Jane Doe is, but John is not. So that's great. We've got a regular member user, and we've also got an admin. So as the admin, let me go ahead and set up a data flows here. We're gonna go to data flows, gonna go up to the plus, create a data flow. Just gonna add a new entity. And I happen to have a SQL Server database that is on premises. Now, the minute I typed in that database name, it automatically picked up that I've got a data source registered with my on-premises data gateway, and it's going ahead and pulling that information from that actual data source itself. So you can see that it picked up the on-premises data gateway, it found that the authentication kind is basic and the username and password are encrypted. It pre-filled all of that because it's already defined on the data source itself, which is awesome. All right, let's go and hit next. And here is the data from the SQL Server database, the AdventureWorks database. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a table because this doesn't really matter. We're just gonna pull in one specific item. So let's go ahead and do that. Pick in dim date and then we'll hit transform data. And let's just go to the very end and we'll remove all of these related tables. Delete those, looks good. And we'll rename it to date. Good deal. Let's go ahead and save and close. And we'll give it a name, date. Hit save. And our data flow is created from the admin perspective. Let's go ahead and refresh it now. And we'll let that run. So now let's go over to John Doe. We are now in the context of John Doe itself. So we can see that from the user logged in. We're in that same app workspace and we can see that the date data flow is there and it's currently refreshing. So as the member now, I wanna go ahead and create a data flow as well. So let's go ahead and create a new data flow. Add a new entity. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to go to SQL Server. Now, one thing you probably just noticed here is before when I did this as the admin, it automatically picked up that on-premises data gateway. From a user perspective coming into this as a non-admin, it didn't seem to pick it up automatically. So I'm just gonna go forth and say, look, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. So if I pull the dropdown, it'll actually show none. Let's refresh gateways, none again. So from this given user's perspective, it's as if the on-premises data gateway just doesn't exist, which is unfortunate. And you may think, well, okay, now I can't use this as the user, but we can. So let's go back and look at that one thing that I said most people tend to miss. So if we come back to our admin user, we'll go to manage our gateway. Let's go ahead and expand our data sources here and we'll come down to our AdventureWorks DW data source. So this is the data source that's defined in the gateway that is going ahead and setting all of this up. One thing we have to do is for any user that wants to use this data source, 
they have to be listed in the users tab. And one thing you'll see here is when I go to that, it only has my ASAXton account listed here, which also happens to be the admin of the gateway. There's no other user that can take advantage of this data source. So let's go ahead and add John Doe in. Add John. So all we're saying is John Doe as a non-admin can use this data source. So he has the rights to see this data source is available and take advantage of it. So I've given him permission to use this. So with that done, let's head back over to John's account. We will get out of this to cancel and we'll start it again. We'll go back to SQL Server. And now you'll see that it picked up the gateway and it shows that it's user now instead of admin. It showed admin when I did this under my ASAXON account. Now it's showing user and it still has the basic and the encrypted items that are part of it. So we'll go ahead and hit next, this looks good. And let's pick a different table this time. We can see that the tables are there. So we do have connectivity to the SQL Server. We'll pick customer. And we're gonna do the same thing with removing all those excess related tables. There's only two on this one or three. Nope, we have to hit transform data first, forgot that. Now we can remove those columns. All right, my warning's gone. Can rename this to customer and go ahead and save and close. Give it a name, save it. And of course we wanna refresh it right now. And while that's refreshing, we'll come back to our data flows tab in the workspace and we can see that it's actually refreshing. So now, as John Doe or my non-admin user of either the workspace or the gateway, I can create data flows, I can use an existing on-premises data gateway. The big thing is they have to be listed as a user of that data source in order to have rights to actually see it. Otherwise, it just acts as if that gateway doesn't even exist from that user's perspective, so they won't even see it. And so if you run into this situation where you're going in from a non-gateway admin user and you go in to try and use a gateway with a Power BI data flow and you don't see that gateway, check and see if there's a gateway already exists and have whoever the admin is go ahead and add that user or your user into the actual user list of that data source. Or maybe there really is no gateway and you just have to go create the gateway. Pretty easy, we just need to make sure that we do all the clicks. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What do you think? Was this interesting? Had you run into this situation? Are you actually looking to use an on-premises data gateway for non-admins of the gateway with your Power BI data flows now that that's available? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button and as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.